drawing shadows on grass can be a bit of a weak spot in some drawings. I often see them and it looks something like this. And while it's abundantly clear what we're looking at, it's perhaps not the most effective representation of what we see here, as we might do really for not a huge amount of more work. Let me show you and explain my process how I would tackle this. And then I'll show you a number of other drawings that highlight the same principle of drawing grass that I'm about to show you, but show you in very different grass and shadow situations. So, how would I draw this? You're watching this in almost full time. It's sped up just by a quarter. So notice that I start by not drawing straight lines. Straight lines aren't anywhere in the picture on the ground and they're going to be hard to hide otherwise. So I do a bit of a jagged dotted line combination to represent the area I want to capture in shadow. So the first thing I do is I establish some tufts of grass in the foreground. Now, if we look at our reference, we can see that on the sunward side of the shadow, we actually have blades of grass or tufts of grass coming up that have the sunlight still reflected on them. And they stand out in profile strongly because of the shadow that's behind them. Now you'll see that on the if you like, far side, the shadow side of the shadow, I've done the same thing. But these blades or tufts of grass, they're going to become shadowed. I'm going to be drawing the shadowed blades of grass rather than just doing an, an edging of grass that's going to capture the light on the sunward side. So having established some of those to do, I'm also filling the space between them. Now, I probably actually filled this space just a little too evenly with black thinking ahead to my finished drawing because there is subtle variation in shadows that we see. And so it's, it's good to try and capture that as well in the way we do our line work. You'll see that in, in one of the drawings at the end where I deliberately do that. But at this stage now, I'm trying to to find exactly what I'm doing fairly, fairly loosely all over or to a large degree. And then I'll, I can come back and make adjustments. And look, if you're finding this interesting, why not hit the like button for me? That really will help out my channel. So now I'm getting closer to the telegraph pole, which is what this is. And close to the pole, there's actually no grass growing because they poison it so it won't grow up around the base. And therefore, I've put some horizontal lines rather than vertical ones, which were representing the grass, to represent the horizontal dirt surface. I don't do long ones because there aren't large, smooth areas, just small sections of relatively flat, compacted dirt. But there's a lot of other litter, natural litter, gum nuts and little bits of stone and twig and whatnot. So I'm just putting a few lines on the telegraph pole to help me work out what I'm going to try and show or not. And then some hatching. So I could have hatched vertically or horizontally. I could have gone at an angle as well. With, with long cylindrical pole shaped objects, my default thinking, if not practice, is horizontally wrapped around. I feel that that gives plenty of chance to capture the, the sense of roundness in the object. And I always think if you're never sure which way to do your hatching lines, wherever possible, try and emphasize the actual form of the object underneath. We never want to do flat straight hatching lines 
on a curving surface that will end up making our drawing look flatter. So I've done that and then I thought well I really need to make a little more show of some of the marks on this telegraph pole where it's been hacked with an axe down the bottom. But before that I'm now joining the dirt that I've done in shadow with the rest of what's there in shadow. And all the time we're looking at our reference, just looking for the darks, regardless of where they come from or how they're formed, what the underlying color or form is, we want to work out where are the darkest areas and how do they relate to each other. And then we get to consider, do I want to draw them or change them or change where they are in some way as well. So now just doing a little more hatching over my fairly light hatching to indicate areas that are catching shadow from a different direction and more strongly in fact. So after this we're now going back to the, the grass after I do just a little more darkness a little more evenly on the telegraph pole. Shadows really are a time commitment if we're drawing with pen and we just need to appreciate that when we choose to draw with pen subjects that are going to have them. So I'm now representing the grass further back and the thing to remember is that grass very very rapidly gets smaller, gets shorter, becomes visually compressed as it moves back. This is in fact perspective foreshortening happening, only we're looking at grass rather than a row of windows down a wall and we're looking on a horizontal plane rather than a vertical plane holding the windows. And now I'm doing something similar in the front and around the base of the telegraph pole except that I'm drawing larger blades of grass. Well they look larger because they're closer and so I'm doing more visible line work but trying to resist the urge to place little clumps of grass evenly apart all over. If we're not careful, if we don't pay attention, that's what ends up happening. We almost create a pattern that's extremely regular. You'll notice that doing it this way, it's been very easy to capture the slight up and down undulation of the ground. And that also helps to give a sense of realism to our scene. It's the sort of detail that is easy to miss. And now I'm just doing a few darker areas of shadow. I'm exaggerating what's actually in a few spots in the foreground in our reference, where because of the angle and the thickness of some of the grass sticking up, it does from this angle trap some shadows or cast some, cast some shadows that create a nice bit of visual variety. And so just doing a few more details around the base of the telegraph pole and that's it. What do you think? In fact it took a total of 10 minutes in real time to draw the shadow this way which was a bit more than the couple of minutes this took. However if we're aiming for a sense of realism in what we draw we get that far more with this than with the other. Let me show you how this same technique works both when we're drawing far more quickly and also we're drawing some very different subjects both the subjects cast in the shadow and the grass that the shadow is being cast onto. Here we have some ibis where this technique is used very very minimally but really we want to indicate the fact that where they're standing is pretty scrubbed grass lots of bare patches but there is grass poking through and these horizontal lines represent where there are parts with no grass or minimal grass and over here we can see that there is some short grass represented particularly under this bird in the shadows. Here we have just one bird an Australian magpie and the same principle has been used very briskly 
very sparingly to represent the shadow being cast by the bird. And it's the shadow that really helps to create the sense of three dimensions, of form, of roundness to the body. And it was just some very brisk strokes that as you can see, the blades of grass in the light coming up, the blades of grass at the back in the shadow going up, that captures the effect of the shadow and the sunlight really well. Here we have more grass, but very long grass, but again, a fast gestural capture of the effect. Overall, the values are lighter in this scene, and so our shadows aren't as dark as in the demo drawing, but it's the relative darkness here versus where there's no shadow, that's the important thing. But again, very quick and gestural and reflecting the same pattern of grass in front that's light, grass at the back that's dark. Here we have a slightly more complicated scene of grass and here a lot of the shadows being cast are not so much being cast by objects over the top but by the actual grasses themselves where they're quite clumpy variety of grasses. But it's exactly the same principle. This scene is quite similar to the demo in that we have a long shadow from a telegraph pole. But because we're looking along the shadow, I've done the line work quite differently. And there is a bit of a track here. This isn't particularly grassed. This is not lawn as in the first example. And so there are horizontal lines to represent the dirt sections, but there's also some shadowed grass where there are clumps of grass growing up across this path. When we get down towards this section that's closer and therefore more detail, we can see it's in many ways more similar to what the demo was. Having regard for scale and for distance is very important when we choose our marks for shading and shadow. Here we have shadow on the grasses that's growing up the side of a hill. This was actually probably the hardest part to work out what to do when I drew this. This is probably my drawing that has most shadow and it's certainly the most dark. But you can see the same principle is involved with the back line of the shadow. We see the grass that's in shadow at the front where areas are still in light. We have the effect of the blades of grass going up and catching the light into the shadowed grasses behind. Notice though that I haven't done all of the grasses to the same level of darkness because that's not always how it looks in life. Also, I wanted this shadow to feel closer, so I wanted the overall value down here to still be darker than up here. And shadow is darker than shade, so these bushes above have shade on there underneath where they're turned away from the sun, but the shadow that they cast on the grasses underneath them is darker than the shade on the underside of their branches and foliage. I have a video on the difference between shade and shadow if you're interested in that. But from the most complex of scenes to draw by line to perhaps some of the most simple, this is a very effective technique to capture the effect of shadows on grass. I hope you have fun putting it to use. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. This is an incredibly useful uh, approach to take and to get experience in when we draw scenes that involve shadows on grass, I can really recommend you giving it a go just as a focused exercise a few times and see if it doesn't capture sunlight in your landscapes a whole lot more effectively than possibly what you're doing now. But look, however you do it, whatever the effect, make sure you're having fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.